Wales Rugby World Cup squad has finally been announced. Here is the 33-man squad that are Wales have selected and are taken to the Rugby World Cup in 2023 in France. Without further ado, let's dive in. Before though, make sure you hit that thumbs up down below and also subscribe if you like the content. I do appreciate it and it definitely helps the, uh, the channel out when you give it a thumbs up and also leave your, a little comment below if you agree with this squad, if you think there's any changes. Um, I'm gonna run through the list, break it down to the forwards, the backs and also the uh, possible outcomes that could arise from it based on the selection and also the unlucky 15 that have not made it, ladies and gentlemen. All right, without further ado, here is the Wales squad. It is made up of 19 forwards and 14 backs as predicted, but the makeup of how those forwards and backs were made up, depending on player positions, was up in the air. But questions have been answered and we are now getting into it. In the loose head props, we have uh, for the loose head props for the front row, we have Gareth Thomas, Corey Domachowski, and Nikki Smith. Uh, hookers, Derry Lake, who is co-captain, Elliot D and Ryan Elias. Tight head props, Thomas Francis, that was an obvious choice, wasn't it? Dylan Lewis, uh, backing him up, and then Henry Thomas. Um, in the locks, we have Will Rowlands, Adam Beard, Dav Jenkins, and Chris Chunza. Uh, he is in with the locks, but as we know, he is also a hybrid player, can play in the back row as well. In the back, speaking of the back row, back row, uh, Jack Morgan, Another co-captain. Interesting. Two co-captains. Um, two captains. It'll be interesting to see how it works. But I'm excited. They're both obviously prospects for the future. And I think, you know, they both have shown promise in that regards. And I think you could just look at it as two vice captains, right? Who's got, at the end of the day, they're, they're forwards. Decision. They're going to have to play smart. And um, we'll see how it works out. We'll see how it works out. But I'm excited for it. I, you know, it was obviously one of the two. Jack Morgan was probably more favourable, but given them both the captaincy role is uh, a sign of good times, I think, for Welsh rugby. Tane Basham uh, impressed enough off the bench twice uh, to, do, to make the squad, and I'm happy with that because Tane Basham was one that I was really excited about. Like I said, he has the physicality, the presence, uh, and overall athletic ability as well, and the size. Backing him up would probably be Dan Lydiat. I'm not entirely sure which will be the first choice six here, but we'll see. Um, and then we have Aaron Wainwright, Tommy Raphael, and Talupi Falatau. Um, out of those forwards, there's a couple of question marks, right? Still, I think um, I think it was a lot of tight calls. Obviously, this is the squad. This is the forward pack. Um, but you you look at the people who missed out on on making the World Cup, and you could. It would be a toss-up. It would be a coin toss, really, in my opinion. But we'll get on to that in a second. Moving on to the backs. Rare option here, going with just two specialist scrum halves. Um, and I can understand why Warren Gatlin did say that he wanted more cover for the back three options. But let's divulge into that in a second after I name this squad, the backs. So we have Gareth Thomas, uh, sorry, Gareth Davis and Thomas Williams as scrum half. Uh, as Warren Gatlin said, he wanted to bring in another player in the back three option. At fly half, we have Dan Bigger, Sam Costello, uh, and Gareth Anscombe. Gareth Anscombe, might I add, had not played any of the World Cup games, but he does offer that full back, back three option, which leads me to believe why would then you miss out on another scrummy um, to pick a, a specialist back three player when Anscombe has filled in at full back, as we know. Centres, uh, Johnny Williams, Mason Grady, George North and Tompkins. Um, here is where I kind of question the two, the two scrum half option and then bringing in a back three option. Because let's not forget here, Mason Grady and George North can both cover the wing. Um, and I understand that you probably do want an extra option at, in, in a back three option. But you have those two. So I'm almost wondering if... This should maybe be another outside center like Joe Roberts, who was one of the 15 that missed out. But we'll see um, if that pays off in the end, right? And then back three options, Josh Adams, Rio Dyer. Lewis Rezamant was obviously the first choice in that bunch. Liam Williams and Lee Halfpenny. Halfpenny, 
uh, in there, most likely for his kicking abilities. Uh, and he was probably the other player that was being brought in to cover the back three, right? Um, so, because I personally would have liked to see another centre, uh, but, but we'll see. So, um, I've already touched upon the two scrum halves, the players that missed out. Uh, in the forwards, Kemsley Matthias, Sam Parry. I thought Sam Parry is very unlucky to miss out here. I think he played excellent with his opportunities. Obviously, in the first game that he featured in, there was a couple of overthrows, miscommunication, but that was overall line-out issues. But he rectified it and then obviously scored the, the uh, late try against South Africa on Saturday. Kieran Azarati, um, possible inexperience. He did opt for Henry Thomas. And I mentioned in the prediction that if he was going to go with Henry Thomas, it was more a case of his scrummaging prowess rather than a look to the future. You kind of have to weigh the pros and cons. You have to balance it out, right? This is a good kind of blended squad. I think average age is 27 um, across the board, which is what you want going into a World Cup. Uh, ben Carter and Reese Davis and Teddy Williams are the locks that miss out. Uh, you could argue that maybe one of them deserved an opportunity to go through, but obviously playing time, um, they didn't get featured enough. And with Tunza in there, you have the hybrid versatility option that I've said. And speaking of hybrid kind of versatility option, Tane Plumtree missing out after being called into the World Cup squad, in the warm-up squad. Uh, possible injury, the, the, the rationale. Uh, but he was one of those players who could cover the entire back row. So you have to back Tunza now to step up and, and make a claim for that spot uh, in the locks. And will he also feature in the back row? There's a possibility, right? The backs that missed out. Kieran Hardy didn't have the best game against South Africa on the weekend. Possibly may have forced the decision on Gatland to just go with the, the two scrum half options. And when asked at the press conference, he did say that Sam Costello is possibly going to cover nine as an option, but told Kieran Hardy to stay ready, of course, just in case there are any injuries. Um, Owen Williams, very unfortunate to miss out. And he's one of those players um, that can also play 10 and 12. So, but he didn't have the best game. He didn't have the best game when he, when he featured. Um, but that wasn't necessarily his fault. It was, you know, the, the entire squad around him as well. Uh, the centers that missed out, Max Duellen, Joe Roberts, and Kieran Williams. Uh, a little bit hard done by, and I feel like Kieran Williams uh, would probably be a bit disappointed that he didn't feature more in the games because when he did come in, and the same, the same with Max Llewellyn, when they came in and featured, they played well. Um, and it might just be a little bit of inexperience on their, on their parts. Uh, but expect them to feature heavily, possibly in the next few years for Wales. Uh, obviously, Max Llewellyn might be a little bit difficult with the cap rule and him moving to Gloucester to play. But Kieran Williams is definitely an inside centre for the future um, and offers some extra oomph when he does feature. So a little bit disappointed there. Uh, and then Alex Cuthbert, probably the biggest name that missed out. Uh, I think the injury and not playing on the weekend probably made that decision a little bit easier for Gatland, um, just not being match fit, possibly. Uh, will he be disappointed? I'm sure he will be. He um, is obviously one of the... Bigger shocks, I think, to not make this World Cup 33 squad. Uh, and then finishing off, Kai Evans and Tom Rogers. Kai Evans had a good game for South Af when he played against South Africa on the weekend and also is another versatile, uh, versatile option. He can play fullback and outside half, as we saw on the weekend against South Africa. So uh, it's a gamble going with Anscombe, but we know Warren Gatland loves Gareth Anscombe, um, because he is kind of the same role as Kai Evans. Obviously, Kai Evans a little bit inexperienced on the international stage. We know what Anscombe can do. He's performed and he's played well for Wales in the past. So, fingers crossed, uh, he can do the job again. And then Tom Rogers, uh, no surprise really. I don't think he was probably one of the question marks. He did get another opportunity on the weekend, but up against world-class competition, he didn't necessarily... Uh, live up to, I guess, international standard or what Warren Gatland was looking for. So there you have it. That is the unlucky 15 who missed out. That is the World Cup rugby, uh, rugby World Cup 
squad for Wales, the 33 men that have been selected, those 19 forwards, those 14 backs, two co-captains, two scrum halves. Look, um, I've already said my piece here, I do think that there should be another outside centre option. I would have personally liked to see uh, Joe Roberts enter in that fold, given the fact that we can have Mason Grady and George North both covering the wing as the back three options. But hey, you, and you bring in the experience of, of Lee Halfpenny, for example, and if he's in the squad, you know he's going to nail them from uh, in our own half. So there you have it. Let me know your thoughts below. Let me know your comments uh, and make sure you give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed the content. I very much appreciate it, as I've said. And make sure you subscribe for more content coming soon of Wales in the World Cup and obviously the lead up to that. This is the Chip Over the Top podcast. My name is Ryan. Thank you very much. Oh, and apologies for the uh, background. It is what it is. I was going to upload this video earlier this morning um, as soon as the squad was announced, but I thought I'd buy my time. Let me ponder it. Let me think about it. Um, any, any, um, well, actually, let me, let me quickly go back here. Tommy Raphael, was he very fortunate? I think so. And uh, Nicky Smith. Personally, I would have liked to have seen uh, Sam Parry and uh, Matthias purely based on what I said previously in regards to looking towards the future, those players, Henry Thomas, for example, coming towards the end of their playing career. But hey, let me know your thoughts below, like always. Um, what do you think? Do we have a chance? Wales World Cup rugby squad has been announced. This is the video for it. Any comments, any questions? Get them below, hit that thumbs up and subscribe for more. Catch you all soon.